and welcome to the Division II State Track Prelims, plus the finals of the 4x8, which we're going to see in just a moment. I'm Jennifer Beck alongside Danny Holbrook, and we are in for some fast running this afternoon. Yeah, great conditions, Jennifer. The state semifinals, if you want to call it that, a couple of state championships on the line here today. Uh, great weather, great crowd. Kids are excited. Better, best time of the year. Absolutely. I cannot agree more. I happen to love this uh, state meet. It's so fun to be down here at Jesse Owens Memorial Stadium. This broadcast is brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the structure Pergola X, Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt Seamless Spouting. And we are off and we are running and our eyes are on lane three. Um, that's Otto Glandorf in A. We're also looking at Liberty Benton in 13. These are the two, the uh, racers we have overall. U Unioto in uh, one, Perry in one, Oakwood and Carroll in two, Lexington and Athens in three, OG and CVCA in four, Woodbridge and Akron St. Vincent St. Mary's in five, Minerva and Waynesville in six, Huron, Liberty Benton in seven, Fairfield Union and Chagrin Falls in eight, and Salem and Shelby in nine. And Danny, Ottawa Glandorf, they have a goal for this weekend, and it's starting with today. Yeah, absolutely. This team placed fifth last year in this event, and they've got all four of their athletes back from that team. We've seen them all year long dominate. Now it's the biggest stage of the of the season here. Let's see if Alexa Fortman and the rest of that crew can get it done today. That's right. So Ottawa Glandorf currently second place right now. Um, I'm not sure if that is Rose Turnwald or not who's leading off. That might be Olivia Fenbert. It's kind of hard to see from yeah, up here, yeah. actually. They, and as we said in the earlier broadcast, they'll change those runners around here. But we know that Alexa Fortman will be running that anchor position. And as uh, I was going to say, as you said, if you watched our D3 uh, uh, broadcast, then you may have heard him say, a relay can sit in a certain position when they know what they can expect from their anchor. Absolutely. When you've got that anchor who's elite, like when we talked about early, Sydney Sin and Alexa Fortman, those are elite athletes. Those are athletes that can make up any mistakes that you make. This is a final today. The only finals that are happening today are this race, the 4x8 girls, and then the boys 4x8. Everything else will be prelims. And in those prelims, the top two finishers from each heat, plus the next five times overall, will be the races, or the racers that will move on to tomorrow. And when it comes to today, what we are covering for you are all of the races that have local runners. When I say local runners, anybody who would be in our viewing area, which is pretty large, it's a pretty large viewing area. Right. <laughs> We've got a lot of teams to cover here. A lot of teams going here, and um, I have lost track of OG. Yeah, they've fallen back into about seventh or eighth position here. And that's okay for right now because the pack is still together. So a lot, and there you see some disruption there. The Ottawa Glendorf girl was uh, impeded on the track. Uh, again, that you're going to see that uh, with all the teams that get crowd up there at the uh, exchange zone. And we don't want to forget about Liberty Benton, who's also in this race. Emma Garmater, Ryla Irwin, Kylie Recker, and Maddie Gerke. They are also running in this race. Out of Glandorf, they've got Rose Turnwald, Olivia Fenberg, Corinne Clausen, and Alexa Fortman. Of course, we've heard a lot about Alexa Fortman, but I tell you, Corinne Clausen ran a phenomenal time uh, last week, and she has qualified in the Open 800. Well, I'll tell you how good uh, OG is. They set the WBL record without Alexa Fortman this year. So they've got five girls that can get it done. So so, I mean, as good as Alexa Foreman is, her teammates are really, really good at this. Got another, another uh, change here in the leaderboard as these ladies make their way to their halfway point. Yeah, right. Uh, Glander still running out there on the outside. Uh, in lane two. Yeah, it looks like they're in about the ninth position. When we say the ninth position, you're talking about not very much difference between first and tenth right now. So everybody's still jumbled in a, in a pile there. This is a really competitive race right now, I Jennifer. Was, you're reading my mind because I was going to say this this second place position is not set at all. I would venture to say the first place position is not set. Either, no, not at knowing all. Knowing what's to come yet, but there these girls are close. They're close together and they're running. Yeah, I you know there there is just a small difference between first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. So from one to ten, anybody can take the lead. That's how close these girls are right now.
Yeah. If I'm looking at this correctly, is OG, I think they're in the 11th spot. The 12th spot. 12th spot. They're in the 12th spot, right spot right yeah. Now. Really struggling right now. They've fallen back another spot to the 13th position. It is a warm day here. 1.30 in the afternoon was the starting point for this. The sun is at its peak, and the temperature is, is uh, at its peak as well. And there's the Goodyear blimp. Well, I looked up at the Goodyear blimp, and I thought, wow, they brought it out for the state meet. But if you remember, this weekend is also the Memorial Tournament out in Dublin. So, hey, we, you know what? We can say they brought the blimp for the state track meet. Ottawa Glendorf's going to have to really make up some strides here. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, they're in the 12th position, but they are coming around a little quicker here. So last year, Ottawa Glendorf placed fifth in this event. Uh, Liberty Benton finished 15th in this event last year. They also are bringing all four of their athletes back this year. Here come the Titans making a little ground up. Just got to get that baton to Alexa Forbin and watch her go. Again, the uh, the other uh, anchor runners for all these teams are really, really good. So uh, you're going to see what the Titans are made of here on the next lap. Well, at least, you know, the broadcast booth, we are now out of the sun a little bit, so it is a little cooler for you and I. So we're getting a little bit of a, a breeze through here. Yeah, to give, your, to give you a vantage point, we are watching this from the second to the highest seat. <laughs> in the bleachers, yeah. In the bleachers. We got a nice little setup here, absolutely. So we see the rudders is very small over there. You get a little <laughs> bit more of a zoomed in position, which is, which is good. And, and really, I'm not comparing this to the Division Three run, but these runners right now, it looks like the heat is affecting them a lot more than the first bunch of girls that ran, as they're really struggling right now. I'm, I've been thinking the same thing and wondering about that. Yeah. Even watching the uh, the pace here feels different than what it was this yeah. morning. And here's the good news. Ottawa Glandorf made up three spots as they're coming in in the 10th position. Let's see what Alexa Fortman can do. She's gonna get the baton, remember this. She's gonna get the baton in the 11th position. And she's often going fast. Yeah, she's really she's good. She's about in a sprinter mode there as she goes around. <laughs> We're going to see something special here, Jennifer. She was in the 11th position. She is now taking over 10th position. Watch her on the back stretch. There's the 10th position. Striding out a little bit, yep. but still moving along. Yep, there's the 9th position she's taken. There's the 8th position as she just continues to move up the charts here. And first place is not that far off. She just passed the, the next girl to go in the eighth position, as I said. So she's got her team on the podium as of right now. Right, right, right. I got a feeling she doesn't want to settle for that. You know, in all the times that I've interviewed Alexa, I could guess that right now at this very moment she's praying because she tells me that's what she does. She's just she, about to take the sixth she position. She asks God to give her direction and give her the strength and to keep moving herself forward as she is now making her way to the second 400 to go. She's got three girls up there that she's eyeing now. Yeah, she's in the fifth position, right? Or the, excuse me, the one, two, three, four. She's in the sixth position, but the group of girls, three, four, and five is jumbled up together. So she's got a chance to get up in the third position. First place is pretty strong up yeah. there ahead. I don't know that she's got enough to get up in the first place, but I, you know, who knows with Alexa Fortman, she's as good as there is. Ottawa Glandorf currently in the fifth spot. Remember what I said, folks, when she took the baton, she was in the 11th position. She is now in the fourth position as she's going around one of the runners on a curve. And this is it. She knows that this is the time that she's got to put in everything that she has. She is now passing the fourth position, moving her team into fourth place right now. And she's really going to have to keep it up to stay in the fourth position. Look, they didn't win, but that was one heck of a run. Wow. 
Wow, so Waynesville gets first place with a 9.17.62, which is quite which the Which is incredible, yeah. Here on second with a 9.21.45. Woodbridge third, and Ottawa Glandorf finishes in fourth place. 9.24.24, they still drop six seconds off their seat yeah. time. Alexa Foreman takes it in 11 and goes into the fourth position. All right, standing with us now, the ladies from the 4x8 from Ottawa Glendor. Fourth place finish for you guys. I'm going to have you introduce yourselves. Um, I'm Rose Turnwald, and I'm a sophomore. I'm Corinne Claus, and I'm a junior. I'm Alexa Fortman, and I'm a senior. I'm Olivia Fembert, and I'm a senior. Let's talk a little bit first. At the beginning of the race, tough to get position early, wasn't it? Yeah, there were a couple of girls at the finish line there when you were handing off, so it was a little hard to get around them. Middle of the race, first race of the afternoon after sitting around all day, a little bit difficult to get loose? Yeah, it definitely was. I, was, I felt really tight and really run down because of the heat, I think. Come on over here. Uh, the run in the third leg of this, you guys were really far behind. Your last two uh, anchors, the third and fourth position, made up a lot of ground. What was going through your mind when you got the baton in your hand? Um, I went first, but when Corinne and Alexa went, I think just the biggest part was maintaining throughout the second lap, and that's what we did, and Alexa made a really big comeback, so that's what, that was a good race. Well, let's talk to Alexa. Great close, as always, Alexa. You know, getting fourth place after getting the baton in your hand, what's it say for you guys moving forward as a team? Yeah, just definitely keep pushing and make sure we're all giving everything we have on this track. You know, it's your last four bite of the year, and each race is going to be your last, so just make sure we give everything we have, and at the end of the day, just make sure we remember who we're running for, and that's for God. Event two, boys 4x800 meter relay. Lanes one, uh, one A and B, West Java and Streetsboro. Two A and B, Shelby and Bexley. Three A and B, Barnesville and Van Wert. So we're watching Van Wert in three. Marlington and Jonathan Alder in four. Perkins and Sheridan in five. Unioto and Greenview in six. Lane seven has Carol and Minerva. We're also watching lane eight, because that's got Ottawa Glandorf in it. Ottawa Glandorf and CBCA and nine has Woodbridge and Fair Park Fairview. Yeah, you look at defending state champion Marlington run a 7.49. Have you ever Ooh, done anything that fast? Seven. 7.49, that's just breathtaking. That's four <laughs> runners that can do that right. kind of speed on an ongoing basis. That's amazing. <laughs> Well, Van Wert is in three. They've got Ryland Miller, Andrew Laudick, Owen Scott, and Gage Springer, and Ottawa Glandorf in eight has Isaac Mackey, Ethan Metzger, Mason Vogt, and Ty Rosengarten. Yeah, this one's going to be a really tight race as we're seeing a lot of them bunched up. Now, the OG kids are in the last position, but he looks real comfortable, looks really strong, and everybody's bunched up here. They really are bunched up, and in a race like this, you got to be careful that you don't get uh, knocked, you don't run on someone's heel. Yeah, well, look, we, you know, the Division Three race, it was hot, but it was a little early in the morning, and you're, you're prime time heat time right now. He's got to be real careful. you got to stay hydrated, and you got to stay out of the sun when you're finished with your race. We're excited to be uh, watching both the Van Wert boys and girls today. You're going to hear us talking about them quite a bit. Of course, you're going to hear us talking about Ottawa Glandorf a lot today as well. Not as many Division II schools uh, in our area, but we are excited to cover them all. Liberty Benton, um, a lot of great racers. And we definitely have some, uh, some fans in front of us sure who are excited about this race. Yeah, they're getting fired up, and I'm not real sure who they're rooting for, but... Uh... <laughs> Looks like Van Wert's about in the 10th position right now, I believe. And Which is Ottawa all, yeah. has moved up a bit, too. They're no longer in that last position. Uh, they are maybe 13th, 14th right now, I think. Andrew Loddick for Van Wert. Has, Bert has the baton, and Ethan Metzger for Ottawa Glandor. Marlington has the best time at this coming in 7.56. What are they drinking in the water at Marlington? A 7.59 and a 7.56? Unbelievable times. So or 7.49, excuse me? If, I, if I could just, if for, for people who are watching who don't understand what an 800 race is like and what it takes, I mean, any more is almost a sprint. Well, absolutely and it's a, it's sprint a sprint two times around the, 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 um, the oval. Right. The track. 
and here's the thing, you, you gotta stay with the leaders or you just get, you know, you, you spend so much time and energy trying to catch up. Okay, so if I'm looking at things correctly, we've got Van Wert in 13th and Ottawa Glandorf in 14th. Um, that is from my way high up vantage point, and there's a lot of runners still bunched <laughs> exactly. way up together. One through 12 right now is anybody's race, and there's no difference in the positions there. They're just all bunched up there together. Colin Kranaski is going to be anchoring for Marlington. I know that's a name that we've heard many times as a solid runner. You're probably going to hear us say his name uh, multiple times again. That's the one that came in with a 7.56. Yeah, you look at Ottawa Glandorf, Ty Rosengarten. He's also running the mile and the two mile. So you, you just wonder, you know, how much energy do these kids expel during a race? And, you know, they got to come back and run a mile and a two mile. Yeah. Especially with this kind of heat. It's going right. to be hot again tomorrow. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's supposed to be hotter tomorrow. So this is how it gets exciting with the 4x8, because already we're seeing changes with leaders. We're seeing things in the last minute. Uh, you get to see who's got that grit at the end. There's Ty Ottawa Glendorf's getting ready to hand off, and Van Wert is right close to him, too. Marlington still stays in the lead, looking really comfortable out front. Everybody's chasing the defending state champions right now. So what would you guess, Danny, that the uh, temperature is right about now? I would say it's probably 90, 91 degrees. Well, let's see. My uh, my phone comes up with severe weather alert. And oh, you're right, it's 91, 91 degrees. 91, are we expecting some severe weather? I think it's just the air quality okay. is all that okay. we're talking about. Well, it's the yeah. air quality and um, the heat. Uh -huh. We have a little bit of a breeze up here where we are, but down there on the track, they probably have all heat. Ottawa Glandorf has moved up to 11th place right now. And I believe Van, Van Wert's 14th. 12th, yeah, 14th. 14th. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is for all the marbles. This is a state title on the line here. And while that leader doesn't have a whole lot of leads. No, he does not. There's still anybody's race from 1 through 10 right now which is really unusual when you get to the third runner. But look, we're at the state championship. We're in the elite level right now. All these guys are good, or they wouldn't be here. And this is the point where everybody's got to kick it in as they get ready to hand it off to their next runner. some passing here on the straightaway. Gonna pass another one. Funny that uh, OG and Van Wert are so close to, to each other right now being in the same conference. And... <laughs> now you're seeing a little separation here in this race as the final runners take the baton. A lot of these runners we're going to be seeing tomorrow in the 800. Some of the fastest runners in the state right here. Leaders look really comfortable right now. Out of Glandorf, still in 11th place right now. Van Wert in 13th. They got to move up three spots for OG, or excuse me, for Van Wert to get on the podium. They got a little work to do, and they're behind the 10th and the 9th place runner, quite a bit of distance here. So they got their work cut out for them. And I think if I look at this lineup correctly, I think they may have made some changes on who who is sure. anchoring. Well, and that's the one thing we, they, they typically don't get their stuff. The changes up here to the booth, so we have the. Uh, original heat sheets. And sometimes those changes happen at the last minute. Sure, sure. There's, there's, there's new rules, I believe, that allow for so many runners to be included on the, on the list so they can make those decisions. Oh, 
seven fifty. <laughs> <laughs> we laugh because we're just blown away by that. Unbelievable. Marley turned unbelievable. Otto Glander trying to hold on to that eleventh place finish. Looks like they will as their anchor is powering his way into the finish. Otto Glander with eleven. Van Wert coming in at 15th. Great finish for our local guys. That was a really good field, Jennifer. No, no disrespect to OG and Van Wert, but that was a really good field. It was. Impressive runners right there. Well, we have a lot more impressive running coming up next, so don't go away. You are watching Division II State Track Prelims and the 4 8 Finals, sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, right here on WOSN. Time now for the 100 meter hurdles in the state track D Lou T2. <laughs> oh my, D Lou, the heat He's start. To heat is getting to me. Well, what's not getting to me is this reality. Actually, it is getting to me because it is a great thing. Our meet is sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the outdoor distributor of the structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alts, seamless spouting. Girls, 100 meter hurdles, heat one, lane one. Callie Shoemaker of Bluffton. Did I say her last Bluffton. name right? But, oh my goodness, yes. I said Bluffton. That's okay. Wrong day, wrong morning. <laughs> you, you look, she's going to run. You're going to get a call. <laughs> That's all good. She didn't care where you say she's let's, from. <laughs> let's start this all over again. Heat one, lane one, Callie Shoemaker of Bell Fountain. Lane two, Maya Riggins of Ready. Three, Ava Littler, Canfield. Four, Juliet. Lasherente Hubner of Marling, Marengo Highland, five Anna Rorer of Woodridge, six Isabel Evans, Johnstown Northridge, seven Brianna Brenna Wright, McLean, eight Claire Duricki of Lake Catholic, and nine Annie Smith of Milton Union. Look at Hebner, look at, look at how smooth she is, and she's three-stepping those hurdles. Look at that trail leg, that's how you run the hurdles. Beautiful running there, she is your winner. Over there in lane one, pretty good run there too by the freshman from Bell Fountain. Yeah. I was going to say, look, we didn't even mention she's a freshman, which is amazing to be down here your first year in high school. That's right. Let's see if we can figure out how she finished out. Looks like she may have gotten sixth or seventh. Still waiting to see. 14.13. That, though, is your top time to move in tomorrow. Bell Fountain Shoemaker gets seventh Seven. place with a 15.91. 15.91, still a respectable run. Great job. We're going to see her a lot in the next few years. Hey, this heat is going off and going. We are watching lane five, Kylie Adams from Bell Fountain, and she is just a sophomore. And she did a really nice run. What, maybe third place in that heat? That's right. I think so. We'll have to see the results to see if we can see that. Smith from Morgan is first in a 14.76. Fields from John Glenn is second. I guess we don't see Adams there third. She fourth, gets fourth, fourth, nice fourth run. place with a 14.99. So we'll check out the... Uh, at large times, see if she makes it in for tomorrow. Well, look, the future's bright in Bell Fountain with the hurdle crew because you've got a sophomore and a freshman who are both in the state championship. So uh, great job by those young ladies. Event four, the boys 110 meter hurdles, heat one. Lane one, Johnny Howard of Woodbridge. Lane two, Owen Wilkins of Liberty Benton. Lane three, Pavel Henderson, Ravenna. Lane four, Micah Mitchell, Steubenville. Lane five, Keith Hopings of Rogers. Lane six, Bo. Harkle Road of Huron, Lane 7, Marcus Hubanks of Batavia, 8, Cash Smith of John Glenn, and Lane 9, Cason Doolittle of Liberty Benton. Two Liberty Benton runners in this heat. Yeah, and you look at Lane 4, Micah Mitchell from Steubenville, the 14-1. Wouldn't it be kind of neat if he went under 14? The all-time record on this track, of course, is 13-4. We talked about that earlier. Ted Ginn Jr. set that record, but the Division II record is 13-7. Who knows? Anything's possible on a day like this. Now you're going to get wind-aided because the wind is pretty strong. That's right, and the wind, now the wind in their face, or the wind, so the wind's behind yeah, them. So you say wind yeah, aided. Yeah, it's wind aided. Sometimes they don't count. Exactly. Uh, they'll, get the, they'll get the wind, don't get me wrong, but yeah. they won't count the record, yeah. 
and they've already done that today with one event. So they had a win aid time, and they you know talked about the jump that the kid had, but it was wind aided. But he still got the championship. That was a long jump. Long that jump. I think yep. was what 25 feet. Yeah, a young man going to Purdue University on a football scholarship. He's won three in a row. <laughs> There we go, up and over the hurdles. We're watching lane two, Owen Wilkins, and lane nine, Case and Doolittle. Both of them are from Liberty Benton, but we are also watching Micah the Mitchell. man <laughs> in lane four. Micah Mitchell, unbelievable. I can't wait to see his time. Tell you what, when these guys, guys and gals, get that hurdle stride. Ooh, he went under 14, Jennifer. 1397. <laughs> I told you, I told you on a day like this they could do that. He heard you talking to him. He did what you said. He's like, yeah, That's Danny, right. I hear you. I'm going to do it for you. <laughs> Michael Mitchell's my guy. <laughs> Heat two in the boys' 110 meter hurdles. In lane one, it's Ronnie Weiss of Delta. Two, Nick Bengala of Girard. Three, Cameron Burgess of Chesapeake. Four, Calvin Speicher of Orville. Five, Diavante Young of Dunbar. Six, Corey Davis of Brookville. Seven, Colton Thomas of Indian Valley. Eight, Lincoln Tyrell of Galleon. Nine, Caleb Haug of Liberty Union. You look at Devontae Young from Dunbar. I know he doesn't have the fastest time at 14-4, 14-3, Calvin Specker from Orville, but I'm watching that young man Dunbar traditional track power. And you called it right there. <laughs> that Dunbar man got the job done. Yeah, he was flying down the track. Well, they have a great program there at Dayton Dunbar, so not surprising at all. Moving next to the girls 100 meter dash. This is heat one. Lane one, Mackenzie Neal of CBCA. Two, Faith Yancey, Circleville. Lane three, Ava Reeves of Bell Fountain. Four, Emma Henry of St. Clairsville. Five, Kendra Deering, Van Wert. Six, Bryn McKeever, Buckeye Local. Seven, Yolanda Schlenkel of Bryan. Eight, Jessica Church, John Glenn. And nine, Paige O'Brien of Waverly. This is a young crowd. It is, and you look at lane four. Emma Henry from St. Clairsville, 11-9. Jennifer, Port Columbus, get the tower ready. She's about to take off. I'm telling you, 11-9. That's crazy for a Division II girl. Until you look at last year's state champion, K. Ebbs, who went 11-5. <laughs> <laughs> and that's right, and that's the, uh, the, the record last year. Yes, right. <laughs> K. Ebbs last year from Akron St. Vincent, St. Mary. Let's see Kendra Deering from Van Wert, how she represents our area. She's going to win at 12-4 seed time, so maybe she can pull this one off or at least get into the finals. Neat to see this uh, sophomore here. She was also here last year as a freshman. Definitely a huge asset on the oh, relays yeah. as well. Um, and Owen's stadium record, might uh, notate this, is Abby Steiner is the, uh, <laughs> is the record there with an 11-3-8. Yeah. She's now running for? Team USA. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> Now you saw there, the, the, some of the girls jumped, but there was no gun fired, so they'll not be a false start. I'm almost sure of that. We could hear in the crowd, the, we, could they, hear, yeah. we could hear some reaction They to recognized that. the same thing I did. Some of those girls jumped out of their blocks, but there was no gun fired, so they'll just reset them. And they've had trouble all day today. They really have with the start. Now we have a clean start, off and going. Remember watching three, five, and seven. Emma Henry is dominating this race. Oh, you called it at the beginning, <laughs> and you were right all the way through. Though I believe that was Jelana Schlenko from Bryan who got second. Yeah, I think you're right. Emma Henry, 11-8, 11-8, Jennifer. Ooh. Comes in faster than her seed time at 11-9. Wow. Schlenkel from Bryan with second place in a 12-15. That freshman is moving on to tomorrow. And then Belfountain's Reeves was third. 
Danny said things are moving now to the second heat and uh, times are a little bit different in this one. We do have wind aiding the runners. And here's who we have in heat two. Hayden Shields, Bethel Tate in lane one. Colette Patty of Johnstown Northridge in two. Mariah Moore of Gilmore Academy in three. Riley McKittrick of Oak Harbor in four. Ciacia Triplett of Girard in five. Nyla King of Toledo Central Catholic in six. Kiana Penn of Cleveland Central Catholic in seven. Taylor Scribner of Toledo Central Catholic in eight. And Ava Bowman of Shelby in nine. Good start by Close though with four. Six has got it. Yeah, I, I think you're right. She got that. Sophomore from, from uh, Toledo Central Catholic comes in with a time of 11.89. Oh my God, I said it. I thought they could go under 12. What a run for Nyla King. And McKittrick from Oak Harbor second with a 12.03. So that wraps up the girls 100 meter dash. And we're going to send it to break right now. When we come back, Van Wert and Ottawa Glandorf are both back on the track as we move to the four by 200 meter relay. You're watching the Division Two OHSAA Championship Meet Day One from Jesse Owens Memorial Stadium in Columbus right here on your hometown sports station, WOSN. Joined now by Ava Reeves of Belfont and just come off the 100. To, uh, got third place in your heat. Uh, got to be happy with that. Yes, sir. Very happy. Could have worked harder, but still pretty happy with how I started in prelims. If someone would have told you at the beginning of the year as a sophomore that you'd be here in Columbus, would you take it? Yeah, because I was... My mindset was really like work, 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 work. And state was honestly my goal this year because I didn't make it last year by tenth of a second. So I was very disappointed, let down by that. But other than that. Well, you have a chance tomorrow to compete. Um, is it going to be tough to sleep tonight? You're going to have to work on keeping the mind quiet to get yourself ready for tomorrow. Honestly, before I came into this meet, I told myself it was just like any other meet to not be nervous. So honestly, I'll probably get good sleep tonight and be ready for tomorrow. Well, congratulations on a great Friday and hopefully even better Saturday. We're moving now to the relays, the girls four by 200 meter relay, and you are watching the Division II OHSAA State Track Championships Day One right here at Jesse Owens Memorial Stadium. This broadcast is sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt's seamless spouting. In heat one of the girls four by 200 meter relay, in lane one it's Valley View, lane two CVCA. Lane 3, Lexington. Lane 4, Bucktel. Lane 5, Steubenville. Lane 6, Van Wert. Lane 7, Philo. Lane, se lane 8, Johnstown Northridge. And Lane 9, Gerard. Van Wert back again. They, uh, what, a, what a great program they have over there. And consistency every year at the regional meets and the state meets. And they just do a really good job in their athletic department. You saw their football team went to the state semifinals. Mm -hmm. You saw their basketball team this year made a great run in the state tournament. And here we are in spring sports, and they continue to do the same thing. I sometimes forget the size of their school because sure. they are in D2. And we see them yeah. a lot, you know, of course, in, the, in, in all the different local invitationals that we do. And they're running with these other racers who most of them in D3. Right. that we saw earlier today. Well, it has a small hometown feel about it. Van Wert's not a real big town, but they've got a big student body, but uh, can get great support from the community, I know that. Absolutely, they certainly do. Leading off for Van Wert in lane six, we have listed Sophie Haug. She is a senior, actually plans to go into sports broadcasting. Ooh, look that out. is her hope. She did some highlight us. work for us in the fall on our sports report program, and it was great to have her with us. And she has her aspirations, I would uh, I would guess, as a sideline reporter, you know, on ESPN or ABC sure, Sports sure. or something like that someday. No reason to believe she won't accomplish those goals.
You know, I kind of forget how big this stagger is because it's I'm huge. sitting from my spot and I was trying to find Sophie yeah. and I'm looking on lane six from my spot, from my locations. I couldn't find her, but there she she's is. Way up she's the line. way over there, halfway <laughs> yeah. around the first curve. <laughs> So if you have one of two seniors on this relay. This is great. If you look off to your right, Jennifer, there's a lot of families on the right, and they've all got their cameras out. Uh -huh. They've all got their phone. That's such a great shot. Uh, <laughs> it is exciting. The support the, to see these families bring out for these runners is, is really heartwarming. Really good start for all the runners right here. We'll see who's getting to the first handoff. Got to remember those staggered starts. They got a lot of, lot of, lot of ways to run, but we got a first handoff here. We see him coming around the first curve. That's right. I think that's lane seven or lane eight. Yeah, Johnstown Northridge. Well, Johnstown Northridge really looking strong right now. Yeah, that second runner, Stephanie Gilmore, she is uh, moving on well. Of course, you got to remember how far she yet has to run yes, because absolutely. of that stagger. It all washes out in the end. Everybody runs the same amount. Van Wert's third runner has the uh, the baton. According to our roster here, that's Kendra Deering, who is a multi-state qualifier. We've seen her in the sprints, you too. You look in that lane four, Akron booked a traditional state power in a lot of athletes or athletics, but here they are in the first position here in the girls' four by two. Really, Van Wert doing quite well as they well. They are, they absolutely are. I think are. they're second hand up. Oh, oh wow. But they just dropped the baton. They just dropped the baton. They were in the lead. And they dropped the baton and it went out of their lane. What this means now for Van Wert could mean the difference. And I think that's Sophie Howe as the anchor. So they changed the lineup. Or May. Or is that Macy Johnson? Yeah. Anyway, that's Van Wert. And Van Wert is going to finish in first place in this heat. Unbelievable. Wow. wow. Akron book to a cruising along. We were just talking about how strong they look and they dropped the baton and that's what it's about. You've got to get that baton around. So Van Wert, 143.59. We're going to see them in the finals tomorrow. Congratulations to our hometown local team finishing first in this heat. Heat two of the girls 4x200 meter relay is off and running and we are watching lane seven. Ottawa Glandorf, Delaney Dewing, Savannah Wrecker, Avery Fox, and Olivia Fenberg. Ottawa Glandorf got all four girls relays to stay qualified yeah, here. And a really nice time of 145. Let's see what they can do here. Here's <clears throat> extension of rundown who else is running. Yes. Riverview in one, Port Clinton in two. WCH Washington in three, Toledo Central Catholic four, Madeira five, Gilmore Academy in six, OG seven, West Branch in eight, and Beaumont in nine. Beaumont out front here, it looks like to me. Beaumont is the girls' school equivalent to uh, the Cleveland St. Joe system, I believe. Watch these handoffs. Could have been West Branch, possibly, though Beaumont's out there. OG also was uh, was close to one of the top handoffs. And you look on the inside here, and Beaumont's losing that lead with the inside runner. That's right, our fastest time coming in is Toledo Central Catholic in lane four with a 142.59. You gotta believe Nyla King is your anchor runner for Toledo Central Catholic. We saw what kind of runner she was. Outstanding job. And she is continuing what she started already today. Look at her make her way toward the end. Nyla King, Toledo Central Catholic. That's gonna be your first place finisher in this heat. Second place going to Gilmore Academy. 4x2 for the boys relay in Heat 1, Lane 1, Riverview, Lake 2, Oak Harbor, Lane 3, Cambridge, Lane 4, Glenville, Lane 5, we're watching Napoleon leading off with Mason Schweitzer, Lane 6, Huron, Lane 7, Steubenville, Lane 8, Benedictine, and Lane 9, CVCA. And you look in uh, lane four, Cleveland, Glenville, a traditional power in this event. You look at their number four runner, Bryce West, one of the top football recruits in all of the United States. The wow. Buckeyes want him. Every school in the country <laughs> wants him. He's a defensive back, a great athlete. 
and he's going to be the anchor in yes. lane four. So I'm sure we're going to keep our eye on that. Napoleon in lane five, coming in with a seat time of 129.65. And if you hear people going crazy, we've got the entire Glenville section to our right, <laughs> and they are some excited folks over there. <laughs> I love being surrounded by I the know, families. Right? <laughs> it is, it's so great to be right in the middle of the elements of everything right. because they're so excited about this. Right. CBCA really pushing the pace here. Out there in lane nine, you know, the spot where nobody really wants to run, right. but you're right, they are really pushing that pace. Let's watch those handoffs. Glenville got the first handoff here. They look, and, and, you know, because of the stagger, they look like they're behind, but they're actually in the lead right now as they go around that curve. All right, here's the point. We're really going to start to see the story yeah. happen yeah. here with the third runner. Glenville's third runner is Malik Davis. And. I, I really enjoy watching the athleticism that we see yeah. here with these runners. We know there's a lot of runners you're watching right now that aren't local to us. We're here watching Napoleon and Five, but there's such yeah. great athleticism in these runners. You want to see why Bryce West is one of the best athletes in the country? Look at this young man right now. He is taking control of this race, and he is dominating on that track. Take a look at his stride. It almost looks like his outfit is painted on right. him, to be honest. <laughs> no question there. That top crew has made his way all the way across the finish line. First place for him. And Glenville is your automatic qualifier to move on. Huron, second place. So 126.75 is the top time with Glenville. Napoleon gets the third place spot with a 128.78. Well, they just set a state meet record there because the Division II state meet record was 126.8. And I was, it, I believe, 125. Okay, we'll check here. Glenville, 126.7. Okay, so just, just missed well, it. Well, no, no, they should have made clear. The state meet record was 126.87. Yes, yes, you're right. So 126, they, they may be checking the wind. Yes, that's exactly what they're doing. Checking the wind doing, factor. Yep. Uh, but we may have seen another state record fall <laughs> in the prelims. We're, this we're, is just yeah, day one. Say, we're lucky rabbit's feet, aren't we? Yeah. Here we go now in heat two of the boys' 4 by 200 meter relay. In lane one, it's Finneytown, two Woodridge, three Waynesville, four Toledo Central Catholic, five South Point, six Brook Bucktel. Sorry, I almost said Brookville. Yeah. All I was thinking about is that I know they're going to be fast. <laughs> Akron Bucktel, yeah. They absolutely. are going to be fast. Seven is Brookville. So that's what it is. Bucktel, Brookville, go. and seven, eight, we have Perkins, and nine, we have Clyde. Clyde is. Not right in our viewing area, but they're actually pretty close. Yeah, they're not too far away. You mentioned Bucktel yeah. before we started broadcasting because they are just a continual powerhouse. They are in every sport, in basketball, football, track and field, and they just got great athletes. And they're going to probably be the chief rival to Glenville in this event on Saturday if they have a good run here. No reason to believe they won't. They come in with a time of 127, which is the best time in this heat. They are in lane six if you want to keep track of them. And they are also in bright Red and white. Yeah. No disrespect to Division Three athletes, which are fantastic. But when you get to the Division Two and Division One level, these are grown men. These kids look strong. And, you know, obviously you have a lot more kids to choose from at the Division Two and Division One level, but really nice looking athletes. Hey, I'm going to give a, a fashion a shout out right now <laughs> to Lane One. Finneytown. I have never seen uniforms like that before. Yeah, looking good, They're Finneytown. baby blue, and they've got like this ribbon-looking pattern around yeah. the waist. So there we go. Uh, something new to see here at State. Oh, wow. Look at Bucktail. Yeah, this is going to be a great final tomorrow. Jason Anderson pushing his way through. Man, those pink track spikes are popular good this year. Good-looking uniform, yeah. Close for second place there. First place, no question, 127.84. Bucktel, second place goes to Perkins with a 129.21. So Dusky Perkins Pirates, they got a great tradition in all kinds of sports. It's gonna be a great <laughs> final tomorrow. Well, we're gonna go to break, then we'll be back. Coming up next, it's more relays with the four by one. Ottawa Glandorf, Van Wert, and Bell Fountain will be back on the track when we return. You are watching the OHSAA State Track D2 Day 1 event sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor. You're watching it right here on WOSN.
We're back at the state track D2 prelims, day one here at Jesse Owens Memorial Stadium. This broadcast is sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X, Ultimate Outdoor division of Alt Seamless Spouting. Four by one race relay here in lane one, Triway, lane two, Shelby, three, Gilmore Academy, four, Toledo Central Catholic, five, Steubenville, six, Port Clinton, seven, South Point, eight, it's the ladies from Ottawa Glandorf, and in nine, it's Huron. Don't forget about Toledo Central Catholic in lane four with the great Nyla King being the anchor runner. They've got the best time at 48.5 coming into this. Look, the four by four gets all the accolades because it's the last event of, of all the relays. But for my money, the four by one is the best relay event. Don't at me at Twitter. I we can disagree. We can agree to disagree. So, I, you know, the, there's the mid-distance person calling half of the meet, and then right. there's the sprinter on exactly. the other one. So we we have our thoughts. But, no, sure. I agree. The 4x1 is exciting. It's fast, and the handoffs are so key, yeah. which we saw in the 4x2. Of course, uh, you know, tragedy happened for the Akron Buckdell girls. Yeah. They'll be in the next heat. Ottawa Glandorf is in eight, and that's who we're watching here. Nice, clean handoff. Oh, that was a little bit. A little uh, bit uh, rusty there yeah yeah fortunately for Akron book though dropping it in the, in the in the previous relay they've got a chance to come back in the four by one and Nyla there's Green. Nyla King again solid runner focused and really really tremendously talented Nyla King shows you why she's one of the top sprinters in the state of Ohio in division two and she takes her team to a birth in the state finals. 48.95 is the top time here. Shelby, 49.48. That'll be the second automatic qualifier. Congratulations to the Ottawa Glander sprinters of Delaney Dooling, Savannah Recker, Laney Hedrick, and Avery Fox for qualifying for the state meet. Moving right into heat two of the girls' four by one relay. In these prelims, St. Lane, lane one, St. Clairsville, lane two, Buckdell, lane three, McLean, lane four, Van Wert, Denisha Branson, Kendra Deering, Sophie Haug, and Macy Johnson. Lane five, Gerard, lane six, Madeira, lane seven, Belle Fountain with Kylie Adams, Parker Pennerwood, Ava Reeves, and Callie Shoemaker. Eight is Oak Harbor, nine is Bethel Tate. Yeah, Van Wert, same four athletes that ran in the four by two are running in this event. You look at Belle Fountain, they've got three of their fours who qualified in individual events. So a lot going on with those two teams. Van Wert is in four, Belle Fountain is in seven. A, did we have another drop baton? It looks like that was Buckhill again who dropped the baton. Unbelievable. Though, wait a second. I, I'm not. No, I don't think so. Well, Buckhill is still running. So no, either. no, that's not the case. We had some reaction from the crowd, so I thought something happened. But I tell you what is happening right now is in lane seven with Bell Fountain. Yeah, Bell Fountain's doing a great job. And then the oh, Glenville but look girls. At Van Wert. Oh, that yeah. was between Van Wert and Gerard. Yeah, what a race. My goodness. I tell you, Van Wert's four by one has been strong all season. Gerard got him 49 6. And then Van Wert second with a 49 6 2. It's going to be a great final. Join us now, just coming off the track after the four by one, the ladies from Van Wert. Ladies, introduce yourselves. I'm Sophie Haug, and I'm a senior. I'm Macy Johnson and I'm a junior. I'm Denisha Branson and I'm a senior. I'm Kendra Deering and I'm a sophomore. Uh, Sophie, you switched spots between the one and the two. Is it a little bit different doing that? Um, yes, for sure. Having a getting out of the blocks for a start is much different than getting a running start. So that's been kind of an adjustment for me to make, but um, it's it's going well. Is it true that you're the better anchor? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well. I mean, for the 100, most likely, yeah. <laughs> great, great answer. <laughs> great answer. Now, you guys have had a great afternoon, got it to win, and then barely got edged out, came in second in the the 100. Feel good about your efforts so far? I do. I feel like we've put our max amount of effort, especially PRing in the 4 by 2 so that was great. Awesome. Anytime you run a relay, great to have chemistry, right? It looks like you guys get along extremely well. Is that true? That's very true. <laughs> I mean... 
I think over the past couple years since we've had the same relay, it's helped with our bond, especially coming back and being able to do better and build off what we did last year. All right, ladies, a prediction for tomorrow. Let's go. First. State champs. State champs. You heard it. Good luck to you guys. Congratulations on a great Friday. Hopefully even better Saturday. Let's head back up to Jennifer and Danny. We're continuing now with more relay sprinting. The boys four by 100 meter relay. You are watching state track D2 prelim sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor. Lane one, Waynesville. Lane two, Girard. Lane three, Eastmore Academy. Lane four, Glenville. Lane five, South Point. Lane six, Chaminade Julian. Lane seven, West Muskegon. Lane eight, Perkins. And lane nine, Akron Buckle. And, and what's interesting here is you look at Cleveland, Glenville, and Akron Bookville, both in the Cleveland, Akron, Canton area. They compete against each other in a lot of different sports. It's track and field that's king in that area, along with football. But these two squads have great history of track and field. We're going to see Bryce West anchoring again for Glenville in lane four. We're going to see Jason Anderson anchoring again for Bucktill in nine. And I would guess we have a few other pretty yeah, solid anchors too. <laughs> those two are pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a fun finish here. Buckle out in nine. Yeah, but running really strong. They are. It's going to be Glenville and Buckle. Look at this. Oh, look at Bryce West go. But take a look at Jeremiah Johnson. Is he got enough to hold him off? Bryce West just gets him at the end. That's going to be exciting tomorrow. Wow. Watch this happen in the final. Eastmore Academy stayed right there with them. I believe that was Eastmore Academy. Eastmore Academy got the win with a 42-60. Glenville, .01 behind, got second. Wow, I thought Glenville had got the win on that. Bookdale gets a third place finish. Eastmore Academy, Glenville, Shamanai, Julian, Gerard. And Bucked then Bucktail, wow. what a fast heat. <laughs> heat two in the boys' four by 100 meter relay. Lane one, St. Clairsville. Lane two, Galleon. Lane three, Indian Valley. Lane four, Toledo Central Catholic. Lane five, Brookville. Lane six, Woodridge. We're watching lane seven with Napoleon leading off with Hayden Gherkin, according to our schedule that we've got here. Lane eight is Bay and nine is Hawken. Take a look at lane four, Toledo Central Catholic. It's interesting to note that the great sprinter Solomon King is in the second position. So they're th I think they're thinking if we can get out to a lead, Solomon King can get us a big enough lead we can hold on or some other strategy. But it's interesting that he's not running the anchor position. That's right. We've already seen Solomon King earlier today. We'll probably see him more. That was a nice handoff for lane four, there Toledo goes. Central Catholic. And you're right. He's <laughs> taking advantage of that straight away. Yeah. And, you know, we've talked about how they can stagger those uh, where they start and finish. So they're probably taking advantage of him him running that long yeah. the back side. They just had a great handoff, and they're in the lead right now as they come into the anchor leg. Let's see how this handoff, what a great handoff. They did exactly why they're so good. They got great sprinters, but their technique is really good. They're going to run away with this race. Napoleon is in lane seven. We don't want to forget about them as well. Nice run by Napoleon. Let's watch the board to see where they finished. Plato Central Catholic, 42-67. Hawken coming in second. So those are your top two automatic qualifiers to move on to tomorrow. Napoleon finishes in fourth place with a 43.19. Nice run by Napoleon. That's it for the four by 100 meter relay. We're going to go to break right now. When we come back, it's the 400. You're going to see OG, Versailles, Indian Lake, and Bath on the track. Don't go away. When we come back, it's time for the 400 meter dash. All right, fresh off the four by one, the gentleman from Napoleon High School, the Wildcats. Introduce who you guys are. I'm Elias Snopley. I'm Brett Bossman. Aiden Gherkin. Mason Schweitzer. All right, starting off the race, short race. So how important is it to get off to a great start? It's, a, it's really important. You really got to dig uh, the beginning of that race and hold the curve and uh, get to your top end speed and hold it. You guys did a great job on your exchanges. How much have you guys worked on that throughout the year? We work on exchanges literally every single day, and we have to to be able to perfect it to be able to get here. Now, being the third rung, a lot of guys say that's kind of an undervalued spot. Would you argue with that? Uh, I think it's pretty important to this race because you gotta 
you just gotta keep the uh, keep the lead coming into that curve and get it to. The, I get as fast as I can to our, our anchor, and he just so he can get out there and just catch him. The anchor, kind of the pressure spot. Do you like being in that position? Uh, yeah, I'd say I like it, but I I wouldn't mind being in any other position. You guys came in fourth today. Is it gonna be good enough? You think going into Saturday? Uh, I'm not sure. I hope so. Gentlemen, great job today, battling the elements, doing a great job. That chemistry paid off to you. Thanks a lot, and hopefully we see you guys tomorrow. Time now for the girls' 400-meter dash. One time around the track. Lane one, Bryn McKeever, Buckeye Local. Two, Alexis Magato of Versailles. Three, Beckett Strong of Sheridan. Four, Alexa Fortman, the defending state champion from Ottawa Glandorf. In five, Jessica Church from John Glenn. Six, Mary Ellis of Toledo Central Catholic. Seven, Sandra King of Buckdale. Eight, Hannah Carney of North Union. And nine, Hayden Sorrell of Valley View. A really good uh, group of girls in this one, and Alexa Fortman's got her work cut out for her. you got to remember, Alexa, just get into the finals. That's what your goal is, to make it to tomorrow. Uh -huh. Every one of these ladies running under one minute. We do have one person with a 59, two people, but everybody else, 58, 57, 56. We've seen, we've seen Alexa go 55 last year. Yeah, she's capable. Now she expended a lot of energy on that first event. We'll see how she's doing right now in this heat. She looks really strong right now as she comes around the third curve. She really does look strong. Take a look at that as she is making her way around, making up staggers here and looking like it's simple. Yeah, she, she really does. And all the great ones do. They make it look so easy. She's the defending state champion and she knows that. And why not have a little swagger, you know, and uh, dominate the field. All right, Alexa Fortman in lane four, being challenged by Mary Ellis from Toledo Central Catholic in six. But it's going to be Alexa Fortman, the defending state champion, finishes first in this heat, cruising her way into tomorrow's final. Take a look at the time here. 56-65, yeah. not a bad time really considering the heat sure. and the intensity. Um, and she really wasn't pushed a lot. She came from behind, ran a smart race, but really didn't get pushed a lot. And you see that a lot of times with really good athletes. When they get pushed, they take it to another level. So Ellis from Toledo Central Catholic is the second automatic qualifier for tomorrow. We also had Alexis Magado from Versailles. She finishes in seventh with a 59.7. Heat two now in the girls' 400-meter dash. In lane one, it's Ashlyn Stark of CF Northwest. Lane two, Deasha Washington of Beaumont. In lane three, Sophia Gregory of West Branch. Lane four, Reagan Campbell of Licking Valley. Lane five, Leela Materas of Hawken. Lane six, Indian Lakes' Elena Richardson. Lane seven, Josie Goodson of Union Local. Lane eight, Ashley Yance of Fenwick. And lane nine, Bath. Exciting to see Bath Absolutely. here. Absolutely, Bath Tatum Wildcats. Tatum Wash, congratulations. She got the wild card. Uh, bid in and she is there in lane nine. Take advantage of it, young lady. Take advantage of it. You look at lane six, Elena Richardson. Indian Lake's going crazy this week. Their girls <laughs> softball team's in the state championship tomorrow, and now Elena Richardson's in the state semifinals. They're, they're going to be everywhere. So we're watching lane six and lane nine. Tatum Walsh actually coached by uh, our own Ryan, who works Shindle, here, yeah, 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 Ryan Shadowall, who works here. So exciting for him. He's not working with us today because he's busy coaching his own. Well, I was going to say, I, 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 he's watching. Trust me. <laughs> Your leader at the moment, that appears to be possibly Ashley Yance from Fenwick. I can't tell who's out there, but I think that's lane eight as that comes around. Yeah, they're coming around the curve here. We'll get a better sense of where we're at here. Lane four, Reagan Campbell of Licking Valley is your current leader. Ashley Gantz of Fenwick. Indian Lakes, Elena Richardson is in six. And yeah, nice finish there. Four and five, Reagan Campbell of Licking Valley and Leela Metris, Metris, Metris of Hawken are your top two finishers in this race. Congratulations to Indian Lakes, Elena Richardson, and that's Tatum Walsh for your great runs. 
We're joined by Tatum Walsh, uh, fresh off the 400. Tatum, not the result that you, you wanted, uh, but still, you got to make it to Columbus. Uh, walk us through some of the emotions of the weekend. Um, I was definitely just really excited to be here. It's a great experience. I came my freshman year with a team of a relay team. It's not as fun by yourself. There's no one to like lift me up and celebrate with, but it was still a really great experience. How difficult is it? You start your season, I always say it's, it's a winter season because it's so cold, then you wind up here and it's 90 degrees. Talk about a little, how, about, how difficult is that mentally? Definitely. I've never ran in heat like this, and it's a lot different than 60, 70 degree weather. So that was a challenge. But overall, pretty good experience. Are you happy that you made it this far and you're enjoying the weekend? Definitely, definitely. All right, enjoy the rest of the weekend. Thanks for your time, and congratulations on making it to the Jess CEO. For the boys' 400-meter dash, in heat one, lane one, Logan Collier of Springfield Shawnee. Lane two, Jeffrey Jemison of Holy Name. Lane three, Landon Wikers of Napoleon. Lane four, Mason Lewis of Bexley. Lane five, Kai McKeever, Buckeye Logal. Six, Malik Davis, Glenville. Seven, Charlie Klein of Zane Trace. In lane eight, Casey Doolittle of Liberty Benton. And nine, Keon Mayberry in Benton. Benedictine. There went my sheet. <laughs> <laughs> we got a little bit of wind up here, so we just lost one of our heat sheets. That won't affect what you're seeing, though. Thank you. Just one. Just Thank one. you to Thank Robert you. Williams, our great, great guy back here who's helping us out. Take a look at Case and Doolittle. Comes in with a seed time of 50.0. Nice run for that young man. Best time in this field. Mason Lewis from Bexley at 46.6, which is really good. So we're watching lane three, Napoleon, and lane eight, Liberty Benton. Hope somebody will go Malik. So we've got Malik Davis fans around us. Mason Lewis comes in with a 46.62, and he is the fastest seed time coming in here. And I'd say he's the fastest guy in the track yeah, right now say, as well. He looks the part right now. He's uh, out in front of everybody, and he looks really strong. He really does. You know, this is the point a lot of times where the runners are just pushing through to get to the end. He looks like he's just riling it up, and he can keep going for a while. Wow. What a nice run. Kai McKeever from Buckeye Local gets the second spot. Mason Lewis from Bexley easily gets that first spot with a 47.92. Our runners were from Napoleon and Liberty Benton watching to see what their final results are here so we can report those to you. Not in the top four. That does mean that they've got to rely on that time. Liberty Benton's Doolittle, though, with a fifth place finish. So, well, there's a chance he there's might make chance, it tomorrow. Absolutely. Heat two in the boys' 400-meter dash. In lane one, it's Coda Klein of Riverview. Lane two, Owen Miller of Oak Harbor. Lane three, Xavier Falks of Steubenville. Lane four, Micah Schuster of Streetsboro. Lane five, John Dolju of Indian Hill. Lane six, Joe Stupka of Clear Fork. Seven, Kale Wilson of Clinton, Mass. Eight, Colby Humbert of Wycliffe. And nine, Samuel Jones of Buckeye Valley. Lane four, Micah Schuster from Streetsboro comes in with a time of 48.8 to be your seed time champion there. He is in lane four, so we'll watch him. And he is up there between four and six. That's uh, Joe Stupka of Clear Fork and Michael Schuster of Streetsboro. Yeah, both of them will qualify for tomorrow's running. For the girls 300 meter hurdles you're watching the state track d2 prelims day one event here at jesse Owens memorial stadium this broadcast is sponsored by ultimate outdoor the ohio distributor of the structure pergola x ultimate outdoor a division of alt seamless spouting in heat one 
Lane one, Kara Fields of John Glenn. Lane two, Stacia Hall of Lakeview. Lane three, Claire Schreiner of Sheridan. Lane four, Isabel Evans of Johnstown Northridge. Lane five, Odessa Smith of Morgan. Lane six, Claire Derricky of Lake Catholic. Lane seven, Avery Cottrell of Fairfield Union. Lane eight, from Archbold, Mariah Mierlace. And lane nine, from Batavia, Riley Van Frank. And in lane two, Stacia Hall from Lakeview. That's not Lakeview in Logan County, Correct, Indian Lake. Right. That is Lakeview up around the Cleveland area. So. Good to uh, com to mention that because it can be easy to right, right. be confused and go, wait, what? Lakeview has your yeah. high school? Yeah, you guys are calling Lakeview Lakeview. It's Indian Lake. No, Lakeview is Lakeview High School. But we're watching lane eight. Our freshman runner from Archbold. That's something when you're a freshman to make it to the state meet. My goodness. I remember a couple years ago, the Butler girl from Liberty Benton who made it down here and won four consecutive state titles <laughs> in sprints and just a fantastic young lady. And we see that every year. We see a freshman or sophomore just dominate these games. Well, Picanetta also has a freshman 300 hurdler, yes. uh, Paige Oldering, who will be in the Division One meet later on today. And again, another freshman. <laughs> Coaches love that. No, oh, well, yeah. <laughs> oh, you're going to be here for four years? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Lane eight, Mariah Mierlais of Archbold. And I think I mispronounced her last name. I was doing the Spanish pronunciation, Mierlais, but now I realize it's M-I-R-E-L-E-S. Mireles. Mireles. This is a tough race, and this is a really Come good on, race. We've got a clear leader right now on, out in lane four, which is Isabella Evans on, from Johnstown Northridge. She is slowing down. The other girls are coming up quick. She is. Maybe she knows that she was the winner and felt like she might want to just uh, hold sure. on to some of that energy for tomorrow because she does have to run that again tomorrow. So Evans is your top in this heat, 4489, Smith from Morgan is second with a 4502. Heat two in the girls' 300 meter hurdles. We're going to see that Bell Fountain pair of hurdlers back here again. But first, we'll tell you who's in the entire heat. Lane one, Kyla Garvey of Huron. Lane two, Jayla Watson of Toledo Central Catholic. Lane three, Isabel Seelbach of Hathaway Brown. Lane four, Kylie Adams of Bell Fountain. Lane five, Anna Rohrer of Woodridge. Lane six, Leah Samuels of Dayton Northridge. Seven, Callie Schumann. Maker of Bell Fountain, eight Ariana Floyd, Ariana Floyd of Fireland, and nine Ava Littler of Kenfield. You've got two freshmen in this heat, and it's interesting to know Kylie Adams from Bell Fountain and Kaylee Shoemaker from Bell Fountain both in this heat together. Boy, what an advantage you go to at practice every night when you compete mm -hmm. against someone as good as you or better, and that really brings out the best of these two young ladies. Both of these ladies very busy here at the state meet. Kylie Adams qualified in the 100 hurdles, four by one and the long jump. Kelly Shoemaker also qualified in the 100 hurdles and the four by one. Exceptional athletes. Set. Lane four and lane seven are the local lanes that we are watching. Good start by all the athletes. I think that might have been Anna Rohrer of Woodridge. Yeah, I think you're right. Leading the pack here over the hurdles. It's tough to see from our vantage point, but she is over the hurdles first. Her and Leah Samuels from Dayton Northridge battling back and forth. You see that stutter there before they get to the hurdles, and that's not what you want to do. Bell Fountains Adams currently in third. And it looks like she will finish third, though Jayla Watson from Toledo Center Catholic was sneaking up on her at the end. So it's Woodbridge and Huron who get, or Woodbridge and Northridge who get the top two, and Bell Fountains Adams runs a 46 point something seven to get the third place spot. Good run by those young ladies. Uh, fresh off the 300 hurdles, uh, Kylie Adams from Bell Fountain uh, finished third in your heat. Have you with that? Oh, yeah. Tomorrow's finals, so just going to see what I can do then. Did you kind of coast a little bit knowing that you had that spot? Yeah, um, I looked, I watched the first heat and I think the fastest time was a 44, high 44, so I knew just run my race and I'd be in the finals. All right, what can we expect from you then? Holding a little coy on us, what are you going to give us tomorrow? <laughs> Hopefully, first place. Awesome. Congratulations on a good effort today and good luck tomorrow. Thank you.
Back to Danny and Jennifer. Boys 300 meter hurdles. Heat one, lane one, Garrett Alt of Minerva. Two, Calvin Spiker, Orville. Three, Cameron Burgess, Chesapeake. Lane four, Braden Richards of Perry. This would not be the Lima Perry. Maslin Perry. There we go. Yes. Lane five, Bo Hartle Road of Huron. Six, Tim Davis of Brookville. Seven, Wyatt Augsburger of Oak Harbor. Eight, Keyshawn Golden of Dunbar. And nine, Maddox Fox of Uniontown. A lot of great times in this event, and they're all jumbled up between 40 and 39 seconds. So this is anybody's race. Uh, the best time here, it looks like 39 or 38-3, uh, coming from Braden Richards from Maslin Perry. 3:45 in the afternoon. Sunshine is pretty strong. It's it's uh, cool and shady where we are, but that's not the case for the athletes down <laughs> no, there on, on no. the track. No, they're, they're burning down there on the infield, and the uh, temperature has just done nothing but go up. Beautiful day. I'm not complaining about it at all, uh, but we are a lot cooler now than we were earlier today with the sun getting behind the bleachers. If I'm watching correctly, it looks like that's Keyshawn Golden from Dunbar. Yeah, He's making his way over the hurdles first. Oh, maybe White Augsburger from Oak Harbor. Yeah, I think you're right on both of them. Uh, they're both on top of the leaderboard here as they come around the last curve. No, oh, but how quickly things can change as soon as I said that. Then you had the runner right there in the middle. Lane five, Bo Harkleford of Huron. A great race, and that's going to be too close to call. We're going to have to wait for the uh, instant timing there. Harkelode Harkel from Road Huron. Harkelode Huron with a 38.83, and Richards from Maslin Perry with a 38.89. Those are your automatic qualifiers for the finals. Heat two of the boys' 300-meter hurdles. We're watching lane three with Owen Wilkins from Liberty Benton. Your overall field is Owen Stewart in lane one from Perkins, Marcus Hubanks from Batavia in two, Wilkins from Liberty Benton in three, Micah Mitchell from Steubenville in four, Eli Mora of Delta in five. In lane six, Nick Bengala of Girard, seven, Clay Perry of Warren, eight, Ty Bova of CVCA, and nine, Kevin Murphy of Streetsboro. In lane two, Marcus Hubanks, the, the freshman, has the third fastest time at 39.9, which is really unusual for this kind of event for a freshman to excel at this. But you watch him right away and you can see he's got those long strides and he's, he's, he's a little bit taller than the rest of the field and you can see how good he's going to be. It's fun to see a freshman to come sure out is. and be solid like that. Really, if you're good at the 300 hurdles, that's something that you want to pursue because a lot of people don't want to run this race. <laughs> right, it's a tough race. Um, so if you can do this race, you can go far. Take a look at lane four, Micah Mitchell of Steubenville. That senior is cruising over, but Owen welcomes of Liberty Benton, chasing him down. Can he hold on to that second spot? And he does. He does. Liberty Benton gets the automatic qualifier for tomorrow. Owen Wilkins with a time of... Mitchell ran a 39.06. Wilkins with a 39.21. Uh, nice run by that young man. He'll go to the finals tomorrow. Hey, join us now, man. That just set his personal best, 39.21 in the hurdles. Owen, how'd you do it, buddy? Uh, I just came in. I had my game plan. Had the, one of the fastest hurdlers in the state of Ohio in lane four. I knew I was in lane three, so had to go out just try and chase him down. And it worked out. <laughs> yeah, you told me earlier that you set a, 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 a record, a school record earlier in the year. This is another school record, Drew. Uh, yeah, so I actually didn't break it earlier this year, but I've been chasing this record for the whole season. Finally got the good chance, and it came. So super happy about that. How good does it feel? Incredible. <laughs> Get second place, automatic qualifier for tomorrow. What do we expect for you out of tomorrow? I'm just going to go out and run my hardest. Uh, and yeah, that's it.
Time now for the girls' 200-meter dash. You're watching the State Track D2 prelims, sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt's seamless spouting. In lane one, it's Bryn McKeever of Buckeye Local. In lane two, it's Colette Patty of Johnstown Northridge. Three, Sierra Grieber from St. Mary's. In four, Juliet Lakshirente Hebner of Marlington Highland. Lane five, Ciesha Triplett of Girard. Six, Faith Yancey of Circleville. Seven, Emma Lane of South Point. Eight, it's Van Wert, Kendra Deering. And nine, Ava Reeves of Bell Fountain. You see Hebner, excuse me, Hubner from Highlands getting a really good start in lane four, and she's got the best seed time, and she is really pushing through this. Now, am I looking at correctly? We don't have a lane eight and nine. We do not have I a lane eight and nine. I don't see Kendra Deering from Van Wert, and I don't see no. Ava Rees from Bell Fountain. No, neither of those girls ran, and I'm not real sure what the issue was, but we did not get them in this race. We did have Sierra Grieber from St. Mary's. Let's watch our final board. She finished in third place with a 25.5. So that should be good enough to get her in tomorrow, depending on what the next heat is like. But yeah, no word on why we did not have Van Wert's Deering in eight or Reeves from Bell Fountain in nine. Uh, there is a lot of running going on today for both of these ladies. So Bryan High School has a super fast freshman in Yolanda Schlenkel. She comes in with a 25.01, the top seed here for all of the runners. She will be in lane five. That's going to be fun to watch her and Nyla King battle this one out. Abby Bloss from Chippewa is in one. Benjamin Logan's Isabel Henderson in lane two. Leela McTrace of Hawkins in three. Emma Henry from St. Clairsville in four. Schlenkel from Bryan is in five. We've already seen her run once earlier today, making it to finals. Six is Nyla King from Toledo Central Catholic. Mariah Moore of Gilmore Academy in seven. Reagan Campbell of Licking Valley in eight. And Riley McKittrick of Oak Harbor in nine. It's really important to get a good start here in the 200. Coming around that curve, you want to lean in. You want to run on the inside lap or on the inside of that, almost to the paint. You want to stay in your lane, obviously, but you want to reduce the amount of space you have to run. Yolanda Schlenkel in five from Brian, and we've already talked about Nyla King in six, who we've seen be powerful. But oh, wow, look at Yolanda Schlenkel. She's looking really good being challenged by Emma Henry right there next to her. And Nyla King's gonna finish last in this race and she looks like she's not feeling the best there. Well, Yolanda Schlenkel will make her way to the finals tomorrow. We also want to check and see how Benjamin Logan's Henderson did. But you're right, Nyla King not looking great. She has had some of the same races as Kendra Deering from Van Wert and Ava Reese from Bell Fountain. That's a lot yeah. on the body. You just wonder if she just had too much today in this heat. Benjamin Logan's Henderson with a fifth place finish. And that wraps it up for the girls' 200 meter dash. Now we're joined now by Jolanda Schenkel from uh, Bryan High School. The freshman just came in second place. How good does it feel? Feels good knowing that I'll be able to run tomorrow and hopefully it'll be better because hopefully I'll be used to the weather by then. I should be able to get first. <laughs> That's what we're aiming for. As a freshman, is your first experience down here, of course. Uh, tell us a little bit about your impression of uh, being at the Jesse O. Uh, it's, it's really big and there's a lot of people. I was not expecting it to be this many people at all like just over there there's a lot of people my anxiety does not like people at all <laughs> well your anxiety must not bother you too much because a fantastic finish grabbing second and getting an automatic qualification how are you going to prepare for tomorrow uh relax a lot and hopefully like roll my legs because they're hurting a little bit from running a lot well, congratulations on a great effort. Good luck for you tomorrow. Event number 20, the boys 200 meter dash. In lane one, Lamar Jackson, Cleveland BASJ. Lane two, Joe Stupka, Clear Fork. Three, Coy Hire of Brookville. Four, Mason Lewis of Bexley. Five, Alex Terekidis of Claymont. Six, Malik Heron of Glenville. Seven, Nathan Baker of Carrollton. Eight, Peyton Caudill of Minford. And nine, Connor Schaefer of Huron. 
You look at Malik Heron from Glenville, Jennifer, he's 21-9, but what's important about that is you go down to the next heat and his teammate, Bryce West, is also in this. If you can get two two runners in the same mm -hmm. finals, you can really score some points there, and that's the way you win a state championship. Oh, oh no. somebody so false started. got a false start. Heard the gun the second time, and now we wait to find out what the verdict is. Of course, uh, you know, in the D3 race, <laughs> yeah. we saw that happen in the 400, and the person was taken out. We saw that happen in the 4x4, four four, and nobody was taken out. Interesting to know what they're going to do here. See if they walk somebody off the track. It's the dreaded stare when they walk to your spot. You know the day is over. And that's exactly what they did. And it looks like Lane, can't really tell from here. Maybe it Lane. It might be Lane. Three or four? Mm. I heard a, a family member or just a fan say, all oh, that hurts, and that does hurt. I, I want to say that might be Mason Lewis from Bexley. Those are Bexley school callers, so. I could be wrong because we are far from uh, the athletes. All right, now they're ready to get the race back going here with one less run. And that was lane three that is missing a person. So that was Coy Hire of Brookville. Okay, Coy Hire. We lost to that. Lane four, Mason Lewis of Bexley. He's getting it done here. Yeah, that's the one I thought was disqualified, but it was just a different uniform, same colors. But Mason Lewis looking great. First place finish there. Second place is pretty close. Lanes two and lanes nine both look really, really uh, closer. Let's see what it is. Bexley gets the first place spot. Huron second. And Clear Fork is third. Mason Lewis, a little showmanship in him. He uh, turned around, looked at the rest of the field, was like, come on, guys, catch me if you can. <laughs> Heat two in the boys 200 meter dash. Our eyes are on lane five with Mason Schweitzer of Napoleon. Here's who's running in the race. Lane one, Peyton Mayfield of Bilton Union. Lane two, Marcus Hawkins of Taft. Lane three, Joey Blobaum of South Point. Lane four, Bryce West of Glenville. Lane five, Mason Schweitzer of Napoleon. Six, Solomon King, Toledo Central Catholic. Seven, Dwayne Moody of Liberty. Eight, Dwayne Galloway of Marion Frank. And nine, Hayden Burrow of Oak Harbor. It almost sounded like another gunshot because of the, the uh, Echo there, but here comes Bryce West in lane four. He's looking really strong, Jennifer. You talk about how he's just one big ball of muscle. Look at him go. He is strong. He's being challenged, though, out there in the outside lane to win Galloway. And Galloway's going to get it, but West is going to get second. Yeah, and, and it almost looked to me like Bryce West understood I can, I can still get into the finals and I can still run better. Well, let's check and see where our Napoleon runner finished, and then we're just about going to break, and actually, we're almost done with this meet. Our Napoleon runner watching for the results here. Finished in sixth place with a time of 22.04. Well, that wraps it up for the boys' 200-meter dash. You are watching the State Track D2 prelims, sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the structure Pergola X. But you know what? Our sponsors, as important as they are, and we thank for for them so much. It doesn't actually cover all the costs. Perhaps you'd like to give a donation to TV44 and WSN as a way to say thank you for us broadcasting this meet. Just go to WTLW.com forward slash donate, make a donation of any size, and we say thank you. We'll be right back for the girls 4x400 four meter relay. For sales in Ottawa Glendorf, we'll be on the track.
Our final race now, the girls 4x400 meter relay, two heats, and we have one local team in each heat. In heat one, our eyes are on lane eight with Versailles. Here are your runners, all your teams overall. Lane one is Salem, two, Toledo Central Catholic, three, CBCA, four, Woodridge, five is Fairfield Union, six is Huron, seven, Barnesville, eight is Versailles with Katie Litton, Miriam Gar Garrett, Brooke Briscoe and Alexis Magato, and nine is Perkins. Reynoldsburg has the stadium record at 348, which is absolutely amazing. The state meet record is 349 by Cincinnati Indian Hill. Uh, back in 2019 with a 349.3. And if you stop and think about this, four minutes is four girls running one minute around right, the track right. each. So to get down to a 349, a 343 even, yeah. is very impressive. Yeah, it sure is. And you got to have the right combination of girls and a lot of things to work on and a lot of girls to pick from, to be honest with you. <laughs> So our runner in nine, Carol, or in uh, Huron, appears to be in a good spot. Of course, she does have a staggered run, so she's got to run a little bit further, but really a good start out there for Huron. We are watching lane eight with for sales. Yeah, we'll know a little bit more here in the next couple of rounds. Versailles handing off, looks like about tied for third. Yeah, nice run right now, right for the for the Versailles ladies four by four team here. Just got to get to qualification. Just got to qualify for tomorrow. That's the most important thing to live another day, and yeah, at least you get another chance for a state championship. Moving her way over the runner from Versailles looks to be around. I think that was maybe fifth place. Kind of close to way too sure. early to call the race though. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of bunched up teams here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, really, with a shot still to take command of this race. And you're seeing why these teams are so good and so special. Once again, just like we've been saying all day long, top two automatically advance the next five teams time in for tomorrow's final. Temperature is going to be pretty similar today, but to today, tomorrow, but I think that it might be a little more overcast. Well, here's the thing too, Jennifer, the pressure mounts tomorrow. When you get in, there's a sense of relief tonight when all these kids go back to the hotel rooms and they're relaxing, they're kind of taking it easy. There's a sense of relief. Hey, I made it to the state finals. Tomorrow morning, that pressure gets amped up and everybody's got to be at their best. Coming up in the next heat, we'll have Otto Glandorf, Avery Fox, Corinne Clausen, Olivia Fenber, and Alexa Fordman wrapping up our broadcast. A lot of people sitting around the track. I mean, the stands are basically filled, but there's a lot of people around the track. There are. It's always exciting to see sure the, uh, the support that happens here at State Track. And it's just fun to be here. We talked about it earlier, how fun it is to be in this environment at yeah. Jesse Owens Memorial Stadium. And I'm not real sure where Versailles is in the pecking order right now. They have moved their way up, so... Uh, maybe sixth, maybe? I know, I actually think we've got them uh, fourth or fifth. A fourth or, okay. You're right, you are right. They're in the fifth position, if I'm, if I'm seeing the <laughs> correct runner. So our anchor is Alexis Magato from Versailles. The senior, that's what we have on our sheet. We have seen earlier today, sometimes this, the, the coaches sure. will, will change things up in the order, so we don't always have the exact right thing. But we are almost to the end now here. This is Woodridge, I believe, going to win the race. Will they break four minutes? That's the question here for our leader. Just, uh, uh, just over. Just over four. Oh, photo finish there at the end. Let's look at the results to see Woodbridge, four minutes, 0 .70. Perkins, second place, 404.84. Huron is third, CBCA is fourth. 
And Versailles finishes fifth with a 4.07.24. Hey, look, a great run by Versailles. They have nothing to hang their heads about. They did a great job. Now we've made it to our final heat of the final event here in our D2 broadcast. It's heat two of the girls four by 400 and Ottawa Glandorf is in lane four. West Holmes is in one, Oakwood in two, Sheridan in three, OG in four, Beaumont five, Valley View in six, Lakeview in seven, Ontario in eight and Carroll in nine. Avery Fox, Corinne Clausen, Olivia Fenbert and Alexa Fortman, two seniors wrapping up their high school season with a lot of success. Yeah, what a career it's been for those ladies and uh, trying to uh, end it with another state championship. And they are off and they are going. We have Avery Fox listed as our lead off here. We'll see if that holds true to form. OG now uh, sitting Somewhere I don't want to say fourth or fifth, obviously because of staggered start, but uh, they'll make it up, I'm sure. Well, we aren't going to forget in the past when I think it was the WBL uh, meet last year where OG was behind by quite uh -oh. a bit and it, they ended up winning the race. Yeah, Mark Baglin and I called that race at Van Wert High School and that was unbelievable how they came out of nowhere. Well, coming out of nowhere, I don't know if we call it coming out of nowhere. It looks like Ontario might be your leader. We still got that stagger, so we don't know for sure, but Ontario's looking pretty strong yeah, right now. Yeah, Ontario looks like they're out front, but uh, every, it's anybody's race right now. Uh, OG sitting kind of pretty right now. They'll be fine. OG handing off right around maybe third, fourth. Yeah, fifth. I think you're pretty exactly close. right. Yep. They're in a comfortable position. And remember, this is prelims. So the goal really is to get in the top two just so that you are ready to go for tomorrow. And they have traditionally all year long kept it around the four minute mark. They've gotten under four minutes several times at the WBL championships. They went 359. Their seed time right now is 358. So they're going to be somewhere in that 357 to four minute mark. You hope it's a little lower be you know, because everybody's running in great conditions here today. And we're watching the lead change, but I predict we're going to continue to watch the lead change. We're only, we're not even halfway through this race. Yeah, it's anybody's race right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine girls right now. See Otto Glandorf now moving up from sixth, doing a good job moving herself into the fourth spot there, almost third. Yeah, hey, look, Jennifer, remember that stride right there and the fact that she came from sixth position to third position. If Ottawa Glandorf wins this prelim, remember that handoff. Mm -hmm. They are currently in fourth spot right now. This is the third runner, and they will anchor with Alexa Fortman the champion in the 400 from last year, <laughs> who currently has the top time in the 400 going into tomorrow's finals. Yeah, you look at her down there and you just see the anticipation. She wants that baton so bad. <laughs> She's getting ready for it. OG kind of boxed in for just a moment there, moving down into the fifth spot. I'm sure Alexa's got her mind going of what she's going to have yeah. to do uh, to move her team up. Yeah, they, they're, they're okay. They're, they can't afford to get behind a lot more right now, but uh, they're, they're in a, a decent position here. Alexa Fortman's got the ability to make this up. And she's got the baton, she and she is on her way. Again, remember this, sixth position, she took the baton in. Two, three, four, or the fifth position, excuse me, fifth position. And now it's the... <laughs> As you can say it, Jennifer. Fourth position. <laughs> and now... <laughs> and now it's the third position. And now it's the, the second, second position. position. She's trying to, yeah. Now she's striding her way out. What will she do? Will she just stick with second place? Will she think, hey, we're going to get into tomorrow? I'm not going to do too much. What's her plan? No, she's a competitor. I'll tell you what she's going to do. She's going to try to get her on the curve here. She's not going to pass here. But you watch how strong she is and watch those strides. She's pulling her in, and she'll make her move somewhere around the front stretch here. And here she goes, Alexa Fortman. That's exactly what she does. This is why she's an elite runner, Jennifer. Look at this takeoff. Division one athlete heading to Belmont University next year. Alexa Fortman brings her team from fifth place to first place. They're going to the finals tomorrow oh, as a top seed. Goosebumps, goosebumps. <laughs> she is special.
Well, that wraps it up for our D2 prelim and 4x8 final broadcast that's been sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. I'm Jennifer Beck alongside Danny Holbrook. We've got, I didn't write this down, so let me see if I can remember our crew. <laughs> we got a bunch we've of got them. Abby, we've got Megan, we have Cassidy, we have Jacob, we have Miles, we have Grace. It takes a lot to make this happen. We also have Nick doing all the editing. Plus, we've got a crew during the highlights, and you're going to get to enjoy the highlight show as well. That wraps it up for us. Finals tomorrow, so keep your TV on WSN for all things track and field. Thanks for watching. Uh, joining us now, three-fourths of the 4x4 Ottawa Glendorf ladies uh, got the win in the heat. Um, not your best time, but still got a four-minute, which was fantastic. Won the heat, advances you to tomorrow. Um, let's talk a little bit about the, the start. How difficult is that in these conditions, the nerves, anxiety, all that stuff that builds on you? I would say it was definitely a struggle because, like, I ran 4x1, 4x2, and after that it was... It was really hard to get back on the track to finish that 4x4, four four, but we did it. You guys had great exchanges. Now, you had to navigate a lot of bodies on your exchange. How difficult is that? Uh, it was pretty difficult. I realized on like the last 100 that I was starting to get boxed in, so I kind of just jumped over a few people and went to the outside to get to Avery. <laughs> What's it going to take tomorrow? I know you guys want to win the, the state championship. What's it going to take? Uh, definitely getting out fast and not getting boxed in. Um, yeah. All right, let's move on to Alexa Fortman here. Alexa, a lot of pressure being the anchor. Some anchors don't like that. How do you look at the pressure? I like the pressure. I like chasing rather than being chased. And definitely just want to go give all that I can and give everything for my teammates. So growing up on the playground, you're always the one playing tag. You're always chasing the kids. Yeah, I always like running after people rather than seeing if they can catch me. <laughs> so I understand tonight you guys are going to load up on some pasta, maybe enjoy some food at Bravo, and then go win a title tomorrow, huh? Oh, yeah, definitely going to get refueled and hydrated tonight and come back ready to do it all again tomorrow. <laughs> all right, ladies, a lot more smiles this afternoon than earlier today. Glad to see it. Good luck to you tomorrow. And uh, that was it for us here today at the Jesse O.